God for last week's Sunday service for what God has done mightily in our midst. Let's begin to open our mouth and appreciate the name of the Lord. He has been so good to us. He has blessed us mightily. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 118 verse 1, it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endure forever. It says, Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endure forever. Let those that fear the Lord say, His mercy endure forever. Let's appreciate God. God has been so good to us. He has dwelt mighty for us in all areas of life. He has never allowed the enemy to prevail against us. In all through the week, God has been so helpful. He has helped us in all our careers and businesses. God has shown himself mightily in our midst. Let's appreciate God. Let's begin to appreciate him for what he has done for us. He has done marvelously unto us. He has been so good to us. Even when we don't deserve his mercy, God has shown himself faithful in our career, in our business, even in our family. Let's open our mouth and thank him. And now let's begin to invite the presence of the Lord into our midst this evening, this morning. That God, that the Holy Spirit shall have his way in this service. That this service shall be a service, it has been tagged, covenant day of fruitfulness. That in all areas of our life, we shall experience fruitfulness. In our career, in our businesses, we shall experience God's fruitfulness. In the mighty name of Jesus, let's begin to pray. That in all areas of our life, even as the service has been tagged, covenant day of fruitfulness, we shall experience fruitfulness in all areas of our life. And let's pray, let's ask for God, for the spirit of grace and supplication, that God shall endow us with the spirit of grace and supplication, that we shall pray and, and receive God's word, even with fresh impact. And let's pray for the pastor that is going to speak the word of life into our life this morning. That God shall speak through him. That the word of the Lord shall have free express in our life in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray. Let's open our mouth and pray to God. That the word of the Lord shall have indelible impact in our life this morning. That in all areas of our life that we've not experienced the fruitfulness of God. That fruitfulness of God shall be our portion in the name of Jesus. And let us pray for every of our members that are still on their way this morning, that God shall hasten their step, that God shall bring them back, bring them to service this morning with fresh impact in the name of Jesus, that no evil shall befall any one of them in the name of Jesus. And finally, let's pray that all our needs shall be met in these services in the name of Jesus. Every needs that we've been, we, we needed in all areas of our life, be ye career, be ye business, be ye in family, that we shall experience fruitfulness of God in our life in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to appreciate God for answering our prayer. Let's begin to appreciate God for in these services, is, uh, is, we shall experience fruitfulness of God in our life and our career in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's appreciate God for answering our prayer. Let's begin to thank God. In Jesus' name we are praying. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Each and every one of us that have testimony, we can go to the technical unit and offer our testimony and meet them in the name of Jesus. Let's invite the choir, please. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's begin to thank God. Lift your hands to heaven this morning. Thank God for bringing us back in his presence. Father, we thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you, Father. Inhabit our praises this morning. Father, thank you for making us to sit with this day. Jehovah, we worship you. We celebrate your mighty name. Come and inhabit our praises this morning as we praise you. In Jesus' name. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our God. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha. You 
Praise the Lord. And finally, on my covenant highways of life. You're welcome to this covenant day of faithfulness and prophetic entrance service. Please, you may have your seat. And it doubles as the first day of the month of October. We're already down to the end of the year. And I'll bring to you the call to worship from a Psalms 128, verse 1 to 6, and then I will read responsibly. So, Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. Let's do together, please. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shall thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine. By the sides of thine house, thy children like olive plants round about thy table. Let's go together, please. Healed, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Yea, verse 6 together. Yea. Thou shalt see thy children's children, and peace be upon Israel. I will read verse 5 again together. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem 
all the days of thy life. And verse 6, yet thou shalt see thy children's children, and peace be upon Israel. Today, your all-round fruitfulness shall be established in Jesus' name. Let's give you a rapturous clap of applause. That clap is for Jesus. Make it bigger and louder. Please let us listen to the prophetic focus for the month of October 2023. Covenant Highway greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I believe God has placed in our hands the required keys for continuous guidance in the race of life through diverse encounters with the world all through the month of September and may none of us miss our steps again in the pursuit of God's agenda for our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. But what is the Holy Ghost saying for this great month of October 2023? The Holy Spirit is referred, referred to by the Christ as the Comforter, which literally means helper. As we all know, man will always need help to overcome the battles of life, which, is, which in most cases appear stronger than we are. The Holy Spirit is God in dwelling present, but with us and in us. This is why the Holy Spirit is not just a spirit of power, he is also the spirit of grace, our helper in times of need. Why the Holy Spirit is one spirit, he manifests himself in diverse ways. For example, there were seven spirits of God at work in Christ, that is, the spirit of the Lord. The anointing, the power, knowledge, understanding, wisdom, counsel, might, and the fear of the Lord. Furthermore, we have the following engracement of the Holy Spirit in Scripture, which, divine, which defines divine enablement, help, to what fulfill our glorious destiny in Christ. The multifaceted engracement of the Holy Spirit includes the following. The spirit of revelation, which enables our access to the deep things of God. The spirit of prayer and supplication, which enable us for effectual fervent prayer that engender impact. The spirit of faith that enable us to believe all things revealed to us from time to time. The given spirit, which enable us to give our way to the realm of financial fortune. The spirit of stewardship, which enable us to be steadfast in our steward, stewardship so as to maximize return on our labor. The spirit of love, which turns, which turns belief to living wonder. The spirit of guidance, which enables us to continually guide it so we can, so we can be like a water garden with, with no more dry season. The last, the spirit of sanctification, which enables us to live a life that pleases God thereby making us heavily ready. We shall be focused on various dimensions of the Holy Spirit all through the month of October 2023. Therefore, the prophetic focus for the month of October 2023 is, I will not leave you helpless. Can we echo it together? I will not leave you helpless. The recommended book of the month authored by Bishop David Oyetepo includes Not by Power, not by might, anointing for breakthrough, understanding the anointing, anointing for e exploits, release of power, and the manifestation of the Spirit. Remain blessed, Bishop David O. Oyedebo. Please put your hands together for Jesus. Are you celebrating Jesus with that clap? If you are celebrating Jesus, celebrate him the more. Praise the Lord. How many of us are happy to see the month of October? How many of us are happy to see the month of October? Extend the hand of greeting to the person by your left, by your right, say you are welcome to October. If that person is not answering, you say you are, face another person and say you are welcome to October. Brother Joseph, you are welcome to October in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Has the Lord been so good to you and your family? Shout, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
it is announcement time. Tell your neighbor, I shall be announced. And you shall be announced gloriously to your word in Jesus' name. Welcome to this covenant day of fruitfulness and prophetic entrance service. In this service, barrenness of all kinds shall be terminated in your life and family in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. The theme for the month has been announced. I will not leave you helpless. Can you echo it together? I will not leave you helpless. And the anchor scripture is from the book of John 14, 16 to 11. It's our month of Holy Ghost. And I pray the fullness of the Holy Ghost shall abide with you this month in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Number four, Dominion Bookshop. Some books of the commission are now available for purchase at the book stand, just at the church main entrance. All books are sold at relatively cheap price. Please visit the bookshop to get some material for the edification of your soul. Praise the Lord. Good news, good news, good news. Hallelujah. The Believer Foundation schools host every Sunday, and it begins toward the end of the service. It shall expand for two Sundays and will last for 30 minutes in each of the section. Please, if you've not done Believer Foundation School, this is an opportunity for you to grab. Please endeavor to be part of this class. This is where you are being taught why we are doing and everything we are doing in Living Faith Church. Praise the Lord. Number six, so winning and outreaches. We are admonished to continue to engage in our individual and group so winning endeavor through passionate engagement on the affairs faith and on the altar of prayer to see the affairs so safe established in this church. Remember, he that reapeth receiveth wages. Your reward shall come to you speedily in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Number seven, Operation 11 Hour Change of Story. Operation 11 Hours Change of Story that began last Monday is still ongoing. We encourage us to engage fruitfully as to qualify for the 11th hour change of story. God will change your story for good in the mighty name of Jesus. This Operation 11 hour is all about contacting his soul and establish it in the church. Please let take it as a point of duty to do this. And I pray your reward will come to you speedily in Jesus' name. Number eight, ask to ask fellowship. Our house to house fellowship, also known as Home Sale, holds every Saturday. The time is, six, is 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Please find the nearest location to you and attend every Saturday. It is important for you to be part of the Home Sale. Please, obedience is better than sacrifice. You are not yet a complete living fitter until you belong to a particular Home Sale. God will bless you as you obey in Jesus' name. The present home cell that are operative, they, are in, they include the robot home cell at Dorak, Glory home cell at Red Bank, then Obedidium home cell at Palara. Please just see the nearest location to you and be part of it. God bless you in Jesus' name. And also know that more house providers are needed for this service. Please, if you want to make your house as an abode for God, why not see um, the leadership in the church and you shall be directed accordingly. God bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Number nine, tithe and offering. For your tithes, worship offering, shiloh sacrificial offering, vows, and every other confidence seed you've made with the law. The bank details is as pasted on the screen. You can, God bless you, and in Jesus' name, you may also scan the display code to copy and paste the account details. Is the code on the screen? No, yet, please. That's the account details on the screen. God bless you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Please listen to this important announcement, full-time pastoral enlistment. Please note that um, full-time pastoral enlistment is ongoing. Interested candidates are to visit the career page of the National Church, which is www.winnerschapelmaryland.com to obtain the job requirement and other pertinent information. If God has been knocking on your door, that you want to become a full-time pastor is an opportunity. God bless you as you do this in Jesus' name. The, um, the application window for this exercise closes on Saturday, the October the 14th. That's in the next two weeks. Please 
visit the website or see the pastors in the house for more clarification. Testimonies kindly share the great heart of God in your life as you see them preserved, multiply, and perfected. You may send your testimony to winners to testimony at winnerschapelbrisbane.org.au or register your testimony at the beginning of the service. God will perfect and protect your blessings in Jesus' mighty name. Number 11, kingdom service. Serving God pays. Praise the Lord. Serving God as demanded and not as convenient pays the unmatchable. We encourage you to join any of our service units to be part of people that is using their talent for God. Please, um, praise the Lord. Our current units include the teaching department, the Austrian and the Austrian, the sanctuary, the choir, the technical. Please see the leadership in the house for more guidance. God bless you in Jesus' name. Praise service prayer. Kingdom steward, unit member, and uh, every other unit head are hereby encouraged to be part of our praise service prayer. The time is 9 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. God bless you as you're part of this in Jesus' name. The time has been changed this morning to 9 a.m. to 9.30 to give the choir for their practice. God bless you as you be part of this in Jesus' name. Midway communion service. Midway communion service holds every Wednesday. We shall be waiting on the Lord in fasting and prayer and break our fast with communion in our homes. Get set for an encounter of a lifetime. Praise the Lord. For the meantime, please, we may connect to Canaan land directly because the uh, other local churches are not allowed to transmit. Please be on the lookout as well as this church will commence our midweek service shortly live in this auditorium. Are you happy to hear that? If you are happy, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sunday service. Join us every Sunday for an amazing service. The time is 10 a.m. to 11.45 a.m. Don't forget to inform your friends, family, neighbors, and everyone after feed contact. God bless you as you do this in Jesus' name. All you need to tell them is come and see what the Lord is doing in our midst. Praise the Lord. Go news, go news, go news. If you are celebrating Jesus, celebrate him the more. Hallelujah. Next Sunday, the 8th of October, 2023, shall be our monthly special communion service. You don't want to miss this service for anything. Rather, you want to invite your friends, your neighbor, and every of your affairs feed contact to come and see the wonder God is doing in our midst. Praise the Lord. For more information, please visit information at Winners Chapel Brisbane. Dot org or visit our website at www.winnerschapelbrisbane.org.au. Today shall be your day in Jesus' mighty name. Clap your hand together for Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is testimony time. Amen. I'd like to call Sister Tosing. And Sister Rumi to the altar to share their testimonies. Let's give them a round of applause. Clap for Jesus. Thank you. Good morning, Miss Tosin. I would just like to give this testimony to say that a few months ago, we while going to relocate to Brisbane, we were like, you know, everybody knows, like, that area is a location where they have like, area in Abbey Bay, like, area of Asinatoro, like, they call it in those kind of streets, in those streets. So, like, for five months, we had to be there. We did everything we could. We did all the mission, we did all the things, you know, like, um, doing the salvation service, we had to go to Nancy, drive them to the entrance of the door, and the, the, the house was not just going. Like, you know, we do open homes and, like, sleep. Like, no one would sleep in the open home. So while praying in July, like, God, what is happening? Why is this happening? Then we have prayed, and that my father said he wants to sell the house. I said, okay, why is this house not selling? So that was the prayer I was praying in July. Okay, we have prayed again. We've asked God, just to sell a house. 
people, why is it as was not selling? So there was no response until why we were about to leave, and one of my daughter's friends, you know, actually want to do a play date, and the father came to drop her. On on when he came back, he picked her up. He said, "Oh, what is happening? Your house is not selling." I said, "We don't know." He said, "Something is wrong. It's been there and forever." He said, "Oh." How many months did you sign with the agent? They said, we don't even know. We just signed the contract. So he said, it's supposed to be 90 days. After 90 days, if the house is not sold, then we can leave. Sack him. He just sack him. And when he was saying, I just said, sack him. Like, I just heard like a voice behind what he was telling me. He said, sack him. Just like the Holy Spirit was just talking to me that, sack him. I said, okay, sack him. So we can do that. I said, yes. So when my husband came back from home, I said, we are going to sack him. And on Sunday, we just wrote him a, 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 an email. I said, okay. We sacked you. You are not going to sell this house again. So you've been sacked, and we're going to give the, the house to another person. And he said, it's just fine. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't sell the house. And you know what? In two weeks, so my daughter and myself, we're already here. And the Holy Spirit minister to me that, okay, I spoke to my dad that we should pray together on the phone. And my dad in Nigeria, my husband still at Abbey Bay, and we did, and he did a lot of sprinkling and anointed the place, and we're on the phone, and we prayed. And the next Saturday was supposed to be, it was on a Friday, and the next Saturday was supposed to be another open room with a new agent. And, you know, Saturday they came, and the buyers came, and they were so much in hurry. In less than, in 24 hours, they signed the contract on, on a Sunday. The contract for the house was, was signed on a, on a Sunday. You know, like they actually had two houses, they have like a choice what to choose. But they went, they said, okay, they came back, they said, oh, we'll go and check the other house. But you know, the other house was not open that day. They rushed and came back. And that Sunday, they signed the contract. And to the glory of the Lord, the, the, the house was sold. And last month, the settlement was made. I just want to give the glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, we'll take the second written testimony. God of winners has done it. I joined this church on 27th February 2016 through a sister who evangelized to me and invited me to come. I remember Papa mentioned two things that day. Stay here for three months and see what God will do in your life. And if you work for God through bringing souls to his kingdom, he will work wonders in your life. I held on to both, believing and hoping in God with strong faith. After hearing life-changing testimonies of people who shared tracks and invited people to church, I decided to engage in the same. The day after I shared tracks in early April, I got a mail from Dubai from a foreign job that I never applied for. Later that week, I got a call from a large supply order from someone I don't know from Adam. The following week, I got a lecturing appointment in a private university that I submitted a proposal to in the month of March. Now I have resumed lecturing the, co the contract, sealed the job in Dubai, and started processing the supply order. Truly, God is here. The God of Wonder Triple has done it in my life. Thank you, Jesus. And the testifier is Raphael Thomas. For these miracle testimonies, let's put our hands together for the miracle working God that is in our midst. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's offering time. Okay, your neighbor, my blessing time. Offering time. Hallelujah. It's another privilege this morning. Let's begin to package our tithe, all our kingdom involvement and investment, all our vows. Let's begin to do that. The word of God said in Luke chapter 8, 6, verse 38, say, give and it shall come back to you. Good measure, press down, shaking together and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. And with the same measure you give, you shall receive. With this understanding, let's stand up this morning with our seed in our hands. Let's also take advantage of the account details of the screen and begin to do our transaction. Let's stand up on our feet and thank God. Begin to thank God for the offering in your hand. Thank God that you have not appeared before him empty, that you have come with a seed this morning. It's our covenant day of fruitfulness. Where your seed this morning, there shall be no lack and want again in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless you this morning. Thank you for bringing us back into your presence to sow our seed this morning. Holy Spirit, we pray and ask, O oh God, our Heavenly Father, that as we drop our offering this morning, let the windows of heaven be open on our behalf in the name of Jesus. Father, shower us your blessing that there may not be room enough to contain it in the name of Jesus. 
Father, no lack and want, no financial lack and want in our lives again in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Amen. Accept our offering this morning as a sweet-smelling savour in your presence. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let's cast our offering and invite the choir for the ministration. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you're happy to be in the presence of God. Um, as you listen to our song, I pray you be blessed in the name of Jesus. for the 
Let's rise on our feet this morning if you are happy to be in God's presence. Why don't you lift up your voice this morning and begin to celebrate the King of Kings. Give him all the thanks, give him all the glory. Give God the praise this morning. Say, Father, thank you. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I honor you. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done for me. If you have seen anything good that God has done for you in the month of September, why don't you lift up your voice now and begin to celebrate him. Say, Father, thank you. It is not of him that will and of him that run it, but of God that has shown me mercy. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I give you all the praise. Your word said the race is not to the swift. Lord, you kept me and my household. Even from the beginning of the year, you saw me through up until this hour. Lord, I thank you. Today is the first day in the month of October. Lord, I thank you. There is nothing that I've done or that I've put together to arrive at this day. But your grace has qualified me. Your grace has separated me. Your grace has exempted me from all the holocaust ravaging the world. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I give you praise. You put food on my table. Lord, I thank you. You have been my shepherd. You have been my guidance. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I give you praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your hand over my children, over my family, over my siblings, over my loved ones, my families, the extended families, the nuclear. Lord, I thank you. Over the works of my hand, Lord, I thank you. Over my business, Lord, I thank you. Father, take all the praise. Take all the glory. Take all the honor. Take all the adoration. Lord, be thou exalted, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done for me and my household. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I give you praise. Take all the praise. Take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Expectations, they say, is the mother of manifestation. I don't know what you want God to do for you in this month of October. Today being the first day in the month of October, the Bible speaking in the book of Numbers, he said, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do unto you. I want you to lift up your voice now and begin to express what you want God to do for you in this month of October. Say, Lord Jesus, concerning this thing and that thing, this and that are what I want you to do for me. Holy Spirit, Lord, by the greatness of your power, establish my miracles this month of October. Lord Jesus, this month of October, your paths will continually drop partners for me and my household. This month of October, the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light. I shall move forward, Lord. This month of October, everything about me will take a new turn. Everything about me will progress. Everything about me will advance forward. The, my businesses will advance forward. Lord Jesus, in this month of October, your help will not be scarce in my vicinity. In this month of October, Lord, I desire your help, O oh Lord. I am desperately in need of your help because I can of my own self do nothing. Your word says, what have we that we have not received of the Father? Lord Jesus, I lean on you this, this month, O oh Lord. Lord, my hope is in you. My holy trust is in you. Your word says they look unto you and they will lighten their faces. We are no longer ashamed. Lord, in this month of October, I won't see shame. In this month of October, everything about me shall be moving from grace to grace, from glory to glory, from favor to favor. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I decree in this month of October, I won't have cause to drop down my head in sorrow. In the mighty name of Jesus, in this month of October, Lord, you will ratify all your plans and purposes for me in this month. In the name of Jesus, Lord, my miracle testimonies, O oh Lord, shall be established in this month of October. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, finally, I want you to lift up your voice and express your expectation from today's service. Say, Lord, in this service, visit me. I have not come here as one that has apprehended. I have not come here as one that knows the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. But, Lord, teach me your word. I am humble. I'm of a lowly heart this morning. Teach me your word again. Teach me your word. Send your word my way this morning. And make me a doer of your word, Lord. And as you make me a doer, Lord, let my testimony spring forth. Lord Jesus, perhaps you are here. Someone has invited you to this service. I want you to ask God for one thing. Just one thing for your appearance before him today. Say, Lord, 
that I'm here today in your presence in this church. Lord, let the blessings of this house follow after me today. And let this particular thing be settled. Let, help me to see the light at the end of the tunnel concerning this matter. I want you to lift up your voice and ask God for one thing. Because I know for sure you are coming back here to share your testimony. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, do your wonderful works concerning this thing. Perform your wonders concerning this issue, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. Lord, we give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Today is our covenant day of fruitfulness. I want you to just say a word of prayer. Say, Lord, by reason of my presence in today's service before you, establish your covenant of fruitfulness in my life. Open your mouth and pray, Lord, establish your covenant of fruitfulness. The first blessing you proclaimed on man was to be fruitful and multiply. Therefore, Lord Jesus, I won't command any breakthrough less than that. I shall be fruitful on every side. I shall be fruitful. The works of my hand, I shall be fruitful. In my academics, I shall be fruitful. In the name of Jesus, nothing will deprive me of my fruitfulness, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. Lord, we give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty, matchless name, we are prayed. Praise the Lord. Let's give a clap offering unto the Lord as we take our seat this morning. Uh, please, uh, our place is not at the back. Can we move forward, please? Those of us that are still at the back, there are seats here at the front. Let's fill the seats. Praise the Lord. Let's look at ourselves, eyeball to eyeball. Hallelujah. Let's move forward, please. Forward is our place. Forward ever. Backward never. Amen. Everlasting Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. Lord, teach us your word again this morning. Send us your word again, Lord. Let every attendee here return with understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, at the end of the day, let all glory be returned unto you in the name of Jesus. Do what you alone can do in our lives today in the name of Jesus. We are expectant of your goodness, O Lord. Let your goodness and mercy follow after us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I'd like you to stretch your hand and welcome the person sitting next to you. Say you are welcome, you are welcome. You are welcome to this service. You are welcome. I can see the glory of God radiating all over you. May his face continue to shine towards you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Drawing from those wonderful testimonies this morning, I'd like to say, if there is anyone you need to sack for your fruitfulness to be established, please sack them. Say to the person sitting next to you, sack them if you have to. Hallelujah. Your fruitfulness shall be established in the mighty name of Jesus. And Sister Tosin, don't forget to share the profit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Through the leading of the Holy Spirit, we have been taught last month about the importance of divine direction about the importance of the Lord being our guidance, about the Lord being our what? Our GPS in the journey of life. Praise the Lord. And through that same leading of the Holy Spirit, we will be looking at diverse ministries of the Holy Spirit this month. And what God is telling you is that as long as you will remain, as long as you and I will keep following his divine direction, we we'll keep following his guidance, then he will never leave us without his help. He will send us help even before we ask for it. And that shall be our testimony this month in the mighty name of Jesus. I say where you most need help, the help of God will arise for you. You are not saying amen as if you believe it. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember, amen means let it be so. So let your amen be as loud as you can. Hallelujah. The prophetic theme for this month is, I will not leave you helpless. God is giving us an assurance here that he will not leave us what? Helpless. He won't leave us what? Helpless. That means he will always send us what? His help. And when the Lord help you, no man can unhelp you. Praise the Lord. 
Remember, the help of God supersedes the help of a man. When a man helps you, he can decide to unhelp you tomorrow. In the, in the you know, world of politics, at most, eight years. Praise the Lord, except for some you know, unfortunate circumstances in some African countries. Praise the Lord. We have seen presidents that have been there for over 45 years. Hallelujah. But when we talk about the norm, at most, eight years. Praise the Lord. But when God helps you, he helps you because the Bible says whatever the Lord does, he does it forever. And he does it that makes you what? To fear before him. The help of God in your life this morning will command the fear of God in others in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm saying the Lord will send you help in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, let's read this scripture together, the anchor scripture for this month. John chapter 14 from verse 15 to 18. Can we put it on the screen? John chapter 14 and verse 15 to 18. If it's there, let's read together. Let's read together. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Because it sees him not, neither knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. Verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. God is giving you an high an assurance. He will not leave you stranded. He will not leave you comfortless. He will come for you. And when the Lord comes for you and I, he said, when the enemy shall come in like a flood in the night, he said, the spirit of God what? will lift up a standard against them. Praise the Lord. When the Lord comes for you, there is no enemy that can stand. Praise the Lord. So I don't know what is that situation that you might be going through. I don't know what is that area of concern that is bogging your mind. I want you to lift up your face unto heaven now. Just as that book of Psalms says that I will lift up my eyes unto the hill from whence comes my help. My help comes from the heaven, from the maker of heaven and earth. Praise the Lord. And as you lift up your eyes unto the hills this morning, the help of God will come down for you in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will help you. He will level every mountain before you in the name of Jesus. Now, Throughout this month, we'll be looking at the help of God. We'll be looking at the help of the Holy Spirit. We'll be looking at the Holy Spirit as a personality. And at the same time, we shall be looking at the diverse ministries of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Now, when you talk about the Holy Spirit, what comes to the mind of everyone is power. When you mention the Holy Ghost, the first thing that comes to mind is what? Is power. Holy Ghost as a what? As power personified. As a power carrier. Because when Jesus was about to leave, he made a promise to leave us with what? With the comforter. He promised to what? To leave us with our helper. But the question for you and I is how many of us actually seek the help of the Holy Spirit? before we embark on anything on a daily basis. Praise the Lord. And one good thing about the Holy Spirit is this, when you ask him for help, he comes for you. But if you decide to ignore him, then he leaves you to do your thing. Praise the Lord. There is no compulsion. Now, having said that, most believers, what we know about the Holy Ghost is power. But that is only one of the seven spirits of God that rest upon what? Upon Christ. Praise the Lord. We know in the book of Acts, it says, and but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Praise the Lord. So in that wise, the first thing that comes to mind is what? Power. Anytime the Holy Ghost is mentioned. But the Holy Ghost, the ministry of the Holy Ghost, is beyond power. As a matter of fact, there are diverse ministries of the Holy Ghost. 
And so this month, that shall be our focus. So today, I'm only going to be laying a foundation and we'll be building upon this during the course of the month. Hallelujah. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will help you and I in the name of Jesus. So the Spirit of the Lord, which is power, is in the Holy Ghost. We have the Spirit of wisdom. We have the Spirit of knowledge. We have the Spirit of might. We have the Spirit of understanding, the Spirit of counsel, and the Spirit of the fear of God. According to the book of Isaiah chapter 11 from verse 1 to 2. You can put it on the screen for everyone to read. Hallelujah. So why the Holy Spirit is one spirit? The Holy Spirit manifests in what? In diverse ways. He manifests in diverse ways. Praise the Lord. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 4 to 5. We understand that there are diversities of gifts for the same spirit. Praise the Lord. There are differences of administrations, but what? But the same Lord. So the Holy Spirit is, 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 is what? It's all encompassing. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit carries beyond power. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will reveal himself to you and hide this month in the name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 11 from verse 1 to 2. Can we read together? And there shall comfort a rod out of the stem of Jesse. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall what? Shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel and might and the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of the fear of God. Praise the Lord. We can see all of these things carrying what spirit brings in. So those are the diverse ministries of the Holy Spirit. Those are the diverse ways through which the Holy Spirit can manifest himself in our lives. Only if we care to engage him. So this is why the Holy Ghost is referred to as what? The spirit of grace. And this spirit of grace is the source of the multifaceted engracement that enables us to fulfill destiny. We all know that at every point in time in the life of man, we will always require the help of God. As a matter of fact, the enemies can be more powerful even than man. And that is why we need his help at every point in time. Praise the Lord. Before you step out in the morning, you ask for the help of the Holy Spirit. Before you embark on anything or you engage in yourself in anything, you ask for his help. And I have realized that most often time, when you, re when you ask for the help of the Holy Spirit, he speeds things up for us. Praise the Lord. He makes things to work for us effortlessly. And then amidst your peers, amidst people around you, you become like as if you are a magician. Praise the Lord. But every time we decide to put the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, you have no, you don't have, this is not your area of specialization. This is, you know, this is man-to-man -man thing. This is a logical thing. Praise the Lord. Then he decides to hands up and allow you to do your thing your way. But then when we come back to our senses and then we decide to involve him, he still always help us. The Holy Spirit will help you in the mighty name of Jesus. So man will always need help to overcome the battles of life, which in most cases are stronger than we are. So we need the help of God. Even Apostle Paul says, he testified. He said, I am what I am by the help of what? By the help of the Lord, by the grace of the Lord. The Lord will help somebody here today in the name of Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 9. I am the least of apostles. I'm not even qualified at all. I was a persecutor of the church of God. As a matter of fact, I was worse than anything. He said, but I am what I am by the grace of God. By the grace of God. So the Holy Spirit can also be referred to as what? As the spirit of grace. Which is the source of the multifaceted what? Engracement that enables us to fulfill destiny. So if you and I must fulfill destiny in a grand scale, if you and I must fulfill our glorious destiny in Christ Jesus, we need the help of the Holy Spirit. We need the engracement of the Holy Spirit. 
and the Holy Spirit will grace you in the mighty name of Jesus. Remember the Bible says in Psalm 74 verse 20, it says, I have respect unto the covenant, for the dark places of the earth are full of what? The habitations of cruelty. The habitations of cruelty. In another uh, scripture, it says, sufficient for the day is the evil thereof. So there is evil on a daily basis. But when we have the help of God, we are what? We become overcomers. We become as if those evil don't even exist at all. Praise the Lord. So throughout this month, we'll be looking at the teaching topic, understanding the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Understanding the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So there are diverse ministries of the Holy Spirit, just like we read in that uh, First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 and 5. There are diverse ministries. And today, we'll be focusing on what? The spirit of revelation. The spirit of what? Of revelation. And I tell you what, this spirit of revelation is actually directly in line with the theme of today's service, which is what? Covenant Day of Fruitfulness. And I tell you what, that one of the most important things or gifts that any believer must covet is the gift of the spirit of revelation. Remember the life of Job. Job had access to divine secrets. And he traded it. That was the only thing he traded. And the Bible recorded that he was the greatest man during his day, during his time. As a matter of fact, God himself testified of Job that it is a man that eschewed evil. This is a man that there, is, there was none as great as he was during his day. Praise the Lord. And what was the only thing he was trading? Access to divine secrets. Somebody say access to divine secrets. So this having the spirit of revelation is very important to us as believers. That is to say, God is telling you things even before they happen. That was one thing that we also saw in the life of Joseph. Praise the Lord. God showing you things to come even before they happen. God showing you, you are going for a particular interview or you are going for a particular exam. God has already shown you the answers even before you get to the examination hall. Praise the Lord. Access to divine secrets. Apostle Paul, he attested, he said, we, I go up, I went up by what? By revelation. So if you and I must go up, if we must grow up, we need what? Access to revelation. We need the spirit of revelation. And I pray that today, that spirit is coming upon somebody in the name of Jesus. I said you won't leave this place without being baptized with the spirit of revelation in the name of Jesus. So the spirit of revelation enables our access to the deep things of God. It enables our access to the deep things of God. The deep things of God are divine secrets. There was a testimony of a man that was shared by God's servant, Bishop David Edepo. You know, this man was a mechanic, and there was this particular big plant, you know, that was meant to be operated upon another. And do, over the night, God will be showing this man what and what he needs to put together, what and what he needs to fix. And it will come during the day, and it will just be as if he was just playing with the thing. He was commanding results because God has revealed things to him. Things that were not open to others. God revealed it to only him. Praise the Lord. And this man commanded exploits in that his area of specialization. So access to revelation, access to the spirit of revelation can make a star of any believer in their various endeavors. And that shall be your testimony and my testimony in the name of Jesus. So if there is any gift you and I must convert this month, we must convert the gift of the spirit of revelation. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17. Let's establish some understanding about this. The Bible says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you 
the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. In the knowledge of who? In the knowledge of him. What is not open to man is clearly open to God. So if God himself reveals something to you, then, you know, there is a kind of, you know, when we were in secondary school, and perhaps, I don't know, I believe many of us must have done it. Perhaps you had an opportunity to teach on a particular exam or test. Or probably you had the opportunity to see answers. You know, there is this kind of boldness that comes upon you on exam day. Because you know, by the time you see the first question, you see number one is the same. Number two, the same question. Number three, ah. Even the people around you, they will be like, mm -mm. this person doesn't smile like this, you know, uh, before. Praise the Lord. So when you have access to the, you know, we call it uh, origo, when you have access to the answers, there is a kind of boldness that comes upon you. It is the same thing with what we are talking about. When God has revealed something, you see, there was a time when I was growing up, I usually dictate the kind of dream I want to dream. I would say, tonight, this is what I want to dream about, and that's what I would dream about. But when God shows you something, when God reveals something to you, praise the Lord, there is a kind of boldness. You can imagine yourself going for an interview, and this interview is what would determine, like, you know, a larger part of your destiny or your life. And prior to the morning of that in interview, God has already revealed to you the kind of questions that you should prepare yourself for. You know, by the time you get to that interview uh, panel, there is a kind of smile that you will just be smiling, but the panel will not understand why you are smiling. Praise the Lord. So there is a kind of boldness that comes to us when God reveals things to us. Because you know that, you know for sure that, no, God has revealed something to men. So you have this extraordinary kind of boldness. You have this extraordinary kind of assurance that, no, I know what God has revealed to me. It doesn't matter the way you are twisting the question, my examiner. I know what God has revealed to me. One of the people that enjoy that in this ministry is Bishop Thomas Haremu. If God, would, especially in the area of mathematics, God would have revealed the answers to him. He would just get there in the exam hall and just be marking the answer. Praise the Lord. Be giving the examiner's marking script. Hallelujah. You will enjoy the spirit of revelation in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible is speaking in 1 Corinthians 2 10. It says, But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. The deep things of God. The deep things of God. So through the help of the Holy Spirit, we, 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 we have access to what? To the spirit of revelation. So the Holy Spirit Christ, that Christ left with us as the comforter is meant to be our companion. We are meant to have a good standing relationship, a good continuous relationship with the Holy Spirit. In every matter, there is no matter that in our lives that can be treated with, you know, trivial uh, priority. And that is why we need the help of the Holy Spirit at all times. And when we seek his help, he will surely make himself available to us in the name of Jesus. So the Holy Ghost is our helper in assessing the revelation of the world. John chapter 14, verse 26, the Bible says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So as a student, you have read, you have prepared for an exam. The Holy Spirit is what you need for you to remember all that you have read. You need him. Look at what he said. He said, it will bring all things to your remembrance. So we need the Holy Spirit for time. Praise the Lord. I have shared these testimonies before, before, you know, I became filled with the Holy Ghost. And I, I used to carry this uh, blue Bible pocket. Everyone, I think we know that Bible. What is it called? Is it Good News or Gideon Bible? Yes. 
I used to put that Bible in the back of my pocket. Everywhere I go, you always find that Bible with me. But if you ask me anything from that Bible, the only thing that made sense to me from that Bible was the book of Psalms and maybe a little of Proverbs. Every other part of that Bible does not make any sense to me. Why? Because, you know, the Holy Spirit, there was no interpreter. Remember what the Bible says in the book of Job? That if there be an interpreter, praise the Lord. So we need the Holy Spirit to interpret to us even what we read from the scriptures. We need the Holy Spirit to reveal to us divine secrets from the word of God. You agree with me that there have been many times you, have been, you would have been reading a particular passage of the scripture. And no understanding is being communicated to you. But you come to the house of God like this, and then you will be seeing that same passage being interpreted in a different perspective. And then a new understanding will be done on you. Well, it is not a new thing. It is scriptural. The Bible says, until I entered into the house of God, then understood I their hand. So understanding is what is communicated to us when we come to the house of God like this. And in that, even for us to understand, we need the help of the Holy Spirit. So we need him to assess revelations, even from the teachings that we are hearing. You've bought a tape, you are listening to the tape, you need the help of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. To have a view or to deduce a meaningful understanding from the message you are listening to. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Malachi chapter 3 verse 1. The Bible says, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord, whom you see, shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom you delight in. Behold, he shall come, says the Lord of hosts. The Holy Spirit is also a messenger of the covenant that unveils the table of the covenant. And that brings us to this fact that the degree of revelation in which you and I walk is what? It's what determines the degree of the glory that we command. That is to say, the amount of revelation that you have from the pages of the word of God would determine the kind of glory that you will manifest. Praise the Lord. I'll share this testimony with you when, you know, God's servant was believing God, you know, for a child. And then they kept trying and all that. And then it was as if nothing was going to come, nothing was going to happen. And then he said, he said, only when he has a child will any cattle give birth on him. For somebody to say such a thing, there must be something that that person must have discovered. And what did he discover? What was it that he discovered? He discovered it from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 14. Praise the Lord. Can we put that on the screen and let's read together. Is it there? Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 14. Let's read together. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you. Praise the Lord. Or among your cattle. So at every point in time or in any situation that we may be facing in life, the question for you and I is, instead of clamoring, what have we discovered? What have we discovered from the pages of scripture pertaining to that particular thing that we are going through? I pray that the law will reveal things to us in the mighty name of Jesus. So the degree of revelation in which we walk is what determines the degree of glory that we command. The Bible says the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehends it not. This and that same light in John chapter 1 verse 5 and verse 9, it said was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. Access to revelation is access to light. Access to what? To revelation is access to life. That is, concerning every given matter, there is something that God, that is a light that has, you know, that has come upon you from the pages of scripture. There is a particular word you are holding on to. Praise the Lord. 
You see, when the Bible says, put me in remembrance, or when it says, bring me, bring forth your strong reasons and let us reason together, the Bible is not telling you to come with, you know, telling God that, God, remember, I serve you in the, your house. What is that particular scripture? What is that particular covenant that you have discovered from the scripture that you can hold on to God with to remind him about that particular situation? When I shared with us that when we were believing God for a child and we went to see the doctor, they said, oh, that is a fibroid. We told the doctor straight away, we don't have fibroid, we have fine boy, fine girl, rather. Praise the Lord. And so was our testimony. There must have been something that we discovered. We knew something. That was why we could able, we were able to what? To counter what the doctor said to his face. And we left. We didn't allow him to say further to our life. Praise the Lord. So the degree of revelation, what you have discovered from the pages of scripture is what determines the amount of his glory that you and I will manifest. He will manifest his glory in the name of Jesus. So our access to the realm of illumination is our access to the realm of unquestionable dominion. Because the dominion of light over darkness is what? It's instant and unquestionable. Now, there was an account of a man with an unclean uh, spirit in the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 31. The Bible says, and came down, he was talking about Jesus, to Capernaum, a city of Galilee. Can we put that on the screen? And told them, please let's follow, let's read together. And told them on Sabbath days, and they were astonished at his doctrines, for his word was with power. And in the synagogue, there was a man which had the spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, you Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know you who art thou, who thou art, the Holy One of God. In verse 35, the Bible says, Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold your peace. And come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in the following verse that they were what? They were all amazed at the kind, the kind of power, the kind of audacity that Jesus, you know, exercised there. Praise the Lord. Why? Because Jesus himself is light personified. He was able to exercise what? That dominion. The illumination was there. Praise the Lord. So the light that the light from the pages of scripture that you and I have discovered is what would determine our stance in the days of adversity. It's what would determine the kind of dominion or exploit that we will command. Praise the Lord. So access to the realm of illumination, access to revelation is what determines the kind of or the realm of unquestionable dominion that will manifest. As somebody, your dominion shall be evidently manifested in the mighty name of Jesus. But however, to flow in the realm of revelation, one must be born again and baptized in the Holy Ghost. We must be born of the Spirit and of the water. And we must be baptized in what? In the Holy Ghost, in order for us to what? To flow in the realm of revelation. Peter gave a sermon in the days of Pentecost. He gave a sermon, and the Bible accounted that they were all pricked in their heart after Peter gave the sermon. And they said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter responded, said, You have to be what? You have to be born again. You have to be born of the Spirit and of the water. Praise the Lord. So this is the beginning or this is the foundation of having what? Access to what? To revelation. Having access to the spirit of revelation. Praise the Lord. In Acts chapter 2 verse, verse 37, down what I will just paraphrase, the Bible says, they say, men and brethren, what shall we do? having heard the, the message of Peter. And he says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So the gift of the Holy Spirit 
The gift of revelation given by the Holy Spirit can only come to those that have been born of the spirit and of water. Praise the Lord. Is somebody getting an understanding this morning? And it says, for the promise is unto you and to your children. So that is to say that when you have access to life, when you have access to revelation given by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, it is not only you that benefit from it. Even the people around you benefit from it. Even your children, your household. Praise the Lord. How much more, even the ones that are not even related to you, they benefit from it. In verse 40, Acts chapter 2, verse 40 says, And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this unto what generation. It says, Then, then they that gladly received the word were baptized, and in the same day were added to the church about 3,000 souls. Praise the Lord. So we can see the power of access to the Holy Spirit. Of which the foundation is led by what? By being born again, being born of the Spirit and being baptized in the Holy Ghost. But then, to keep growing in, the, in revelation, we must keep engaging the truth already revealed to qualify for more. You say, they say wisdom is the application of knowledge. So when God has revealed something to you and I and you have not applied them, then you are not qualified for more. Praise the Lord. So it is wisdom for us to what? To apply the knowledge that God has revealed unto us. And the application of the revelation that God has revealed unto us is what positions us for more revelation. Praise the Lord. So if God has revealed something to you and you have not even done anything concerning it, then, you know, you are not qualified for more. You are not ready for more. Praise the Lord. So it is not enough to have access to revelation, but what? To sustain the access to revelation. To keep growing in access to revelation. Praise the Lord. The Bible speaking in Luke chapter 6 verse 4, it says, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, when you have not done what I ask you to do? And he began to liken the one who does whatever he has commanded to do as a wise man that builds his house upon the rock. The storm came, the wind blew, you know, the house is standing strong. So it is wisdom to what? To apply the revelation that God has revealed unto us by the help of the Holy Spirit. And I pray that this month, the Holy Spirit will help you and he will reveal things to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, I am very sure that today, God is said to establish your fruitfulness. Uh, that amen is too low. Amen. It's as if you didn't believe it. I said, God is ready to establish your fruitfulness. Amen. Fruitfulness in all areas. Amen. Fruitfulness in all your endeavors. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I would like you to read with me from the book of Genesis. We'll read from verse 26. I mean, chapter 26, from verse 1 to verse 1, 2, 12, verse 14. Now, we could see God establishing his covenant of fruitfulness in the life of Isaac. And he did the same thing in the life of Jacob. He did the same thing in the life of our father, Abraham. And so because of that, I know of a sure that your fruitfulness and my fruitfulness is a surety this morning. If you are saying amen, say it louder. Amen. Genesis 26 and verse 1. The Bible says there was a famine in the land beside the first famine. That was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerard. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell you of. So that is to say that there is a place of following God's direction even in the process of establishing our fruitfulness. I don't know if you saw what I saw from that scripture that I just read. God said unto him, he said, The Lord appeared to him 
And he said, don't go to Egypt. Dwell in the land that I shall tell thee. So I don't know which land God has been telling you to dwell. I don't know what God has been telling you in a particular area. I don't know what direction God has been telling you to, 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 uh, uh, to, to follow. Your obedience or your, your submission to his guidance, to whatever he has tell you to do, is what we position. It is the number one prerequisite for what? For our fruitfulness to be established. Praise the Lord. So there was famine aside the first famine. And even in the midst of that famine, this man was prospering. He was prospering to the point that the Philistines envied him. Praise the Lord. We have had people here in this auditorium share testimony that in the midst of COVID was when they got blessed most. Praise the Lord. When some people are, you know, looking forward to job seeker and job keeper allowances, that was the time that some people were commanding export. So that is to say, when we are on God's side, it doesn't matter. The things happening around us are what? They, they are irrelevant. Praise the Lord. It doesn't matter what the economy of the world is commanding. Your own case will be what? Will be definitely different. And that shall be somebody's testimony in the name of Jesus. In verse 12 of that Genesis 26, the Bible says, Then Isaac sowed in that land. And he received in the same year more than what? An hundred fold. And the Lord blessed him. In verse 13, he says, The man was great. He went forward. He grew until he became very great. Look at that. That was continuous progress, continuous advancement. He sold in the land. He reaped more than hundred fold. He was great. And he became very great. To the point of envy. And that shall be your testimony in the name of Jesus. I don't know which area you are in need of fruitfulness. Your fruitfulness shall be established today in the name of Jesus. Maybe they have called you barren in the area of finances. Perhaps they've called you barren even in concerning the area of the fruit of the world. I decree today, I stand upon the shoulder of my father, Bishop David Oedepo. That your fruitfulness is established today in the name of Jesus. I say you shall be called fruitful in the name of Jesus. Perhaps you are believing God for another child. I say children will surround your tables in the name of Jesus. So when we talk about fruitfulness, fruitfulness does not only have to do with what? Physical, you know, how, I mean, when we talk about fruitfulness, it's not only in the area of the fruit of the womb. There are people that are barren financially. There are people that are barren even in the area of ideas. There are people that are barren career-wise. Praise the Lord. But our God specializes in all areas. And that God that you have come here to seek today will meet you in your own area in the name of Jesus. So in Genesis 26 verse 14, the Bible says... For he had possession of flocks and possession of heads, and great store of what? Of servants and the Philistines and bidding. That shall be your testimony today and beyond in the name of Jesus. God prospered Isaac to the point of envy. He did the same for Jacob. Praise the Lord. In the book of Genesis chapter 35 verse 9, we can see the same thing happening in the life of Jacob. Despite the things that he even went through under the, you know, tutorship of Laban. Praise the Lord. We still saw how God prospered him. And remember in the book of Galatians, the Bible says, as Isaac was, we are what? We are heirs of promise. And because we are heirs of promise, the Bible recorded that our father, Abraham, was fruitful. Praise the Lord. As a matter of fact, it was in him that the families of the head became blessed. And so, because we are joined heads to, to, to the, uh, 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 I mean, with Isaac, as the children, as the son of Abraham, we are qualified for the Abrahamic order of what? Of blessing. 
And these are the things that Christ has come to redeem us, to partake of, to be a partaker of those things. Now, what does it mean to be fruitful? Fruitfulness means to blossom. Praise the Lord. Fruitfulness means to blossom. It means to have a record of continuous progress. Praise the Lord. In your academics, you are just progressing. In your businesses, you do little things, you are realizing great profits. Praise the Lord. That is what we call what? Fruitfulness. And one thing that we know of for sure is that the first blessing that God proclaimed upon man was what? To be fruitful and to what? And to multiply and fill the earth. So that means God's original plan for you and I is to be fruitful in all areas. So whether your specialization is in the area of farming, your specialization is in the area of accounting or anything, in whatsoever thing you find yourself doing, you are meant to be what? To be fruitful. You are meant to prosper. And you are prospering today in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 27, number 6. The Bible says, It shall cause them that come of Jacob to take root. Israel shall blossom and bud and fill the face of the world with fruit. That means your fruitfulness will not only be known to you, it shall be evident to your world. Also, fruitfulness means to be profitable. It means to be profitable and enjoy great prosperity. And that shall be your testimony in the name of Jesus. I say you will be profitable and you will enjoy great prosperity in the name of Jesus. We can read that from Psalm 92 from verse 10 to 12. Also, fruitfulness means to be plenteous and blossom abundantly. I would like to read this one to us. Isaiah chapter 35. And verse 2, the Bible says, It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto him, the excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. It will blossom abundantly in all areas in the name of Jesus. So therefore, it is important for us to know that fruitfulness is a covenant. It is a covenant, sir. As I was reading through the pages of scripture, I discovered that fruitfulness is a covenant. It does not just come back. It's not just something you just go and pluck from the tree. You do your part, God does his own part. Praise the Lord. Fruitfulness became a covenant after the fall of Adam. God's original plan for us was to be fruitful and multiply and feed the face of the head. But then Adam fell. And then there was a cause. And fruitfulness became something that we have to struggle for. But in God, out of his own infinite mercy, fruitfulness, he gave us a second chance. He gave us another opportunity. Praise the Lord. And so fruitfulness is not just something that will come by. Fruitfulness is what? It's a covenant with God. So you want to be fruitful in all areas, you need to what? To play your own part of the covenant. Let's look at why or what establishes fruitfulness as a covenant. Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 9. As we are rounding up, the Bible says, can we put it on the screen? For I will have respect, can we read together? For I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. Now, if you read that Leviticus chapter 26, you read from verse 3, you will discover that there were certain prerequisites before this was being said by God. There were certain things that the children of Israel had to do. There were certain things that you and I must do in order for us to qualify for this fruitfulness. Praise the Lord. So fruitfulness is a covenant. You play your part with God, and I tell you what, the prerequisite to fruitfulness in God is obedience. Obedience. Say with me, obedience. So fruitfulness is our heritage, but it is only accessible by what? By obedience. 
And you can read that from Leviticus 26, from verse 3 to 9. So obedience is a what? Is a paramount prerequisite for fruitfulness. You want to be fruitful, you need to obey God. What is God saying to you? What direction has God asked you to go? All through last month, we were examining divine direction. In those areas you have been seeking God, what is the direction that God is asking you to go? It is in going that direction that our fruitfulness becomes what? Established in God. You won't be denied of your fruitfulness this time in the name of Jesus. Also, fruitfulness is a commandment. Now, before we go into that, Operation 11th Hour has been, this, as a change of story, has been announced by God's servant. The, we have, I think this is the first time that this is happening in, this, in the uh, history of this ministry. Having an operation when Shiloh is, you know, almost at the corner. But I know that through the leading of the Holy Spirit upon his servant, Bishop David, it is an opportunity for somebody to command extraordinary change of story. Praise the Lord. And what is the commandment that is given to us? Go ye into the world and preach the gospel. He said, go and bring forth fruit. And see to he that your fruit remain and abide. And remember, when you keep bringing fruit, he said, every tree, every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, he begins to prune you, he prunes you and trims you. So that you will keep what? Bringing more fruits. But the ones that are fruitless, he says, what, does, what, what, what happens to them? Praise the Lord. What happens to them? He uproots them to the root. May we not be uprooted in the name of Jesus. So fruitfulness is also a commandment. So let's engage. Let's engage with our heart. Let's engage with our heart in this season. Praying for the advancement of his kingdom. Praying down the kingdom of heaven to be established on earth. Praying for souls to be established in church. Praise the Lord. You cannot have a heart for God and God will not, you know, go out of his way for you. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. It is a commandment. The Bible says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Nowadays you see all manner of things. Now you are seeing female and female. You are seeing male and male. That was not what God created. Praise the Lord. In verse 28, the Bible says, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. So you are not only meant to be fruitful, you are meant to subdue the earth. You are meant to take what? Dominance. You are meant to dominate in your world. And that shall be our testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. It says, subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the air. Praise the Lord. And finally, this morning, fruitfulness is a reward for our labor. So one of the fruits of our labor is, what is fruitfulness. One of the proceeds of our labor in the kingdom is fruitfulness. Remember Psalm 127 verse 3 says, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. And I tell you what, reward is higher in value than inheritance. Reward is what? Is higher in value than inheritance. So for you and I to qualify for a word of fruitfulness from God, we must, there are, there are certain things we must do. Praise the Lord. And I pray that today your fruitfulness is in your hands in the mighty name of Jesus. So as seeds of Abraham, we have been redeemed to be fruitful. We have been redeemed to be fruitful. Praise the Lord. Why? Because we have been redeemed from course, according to Galatians chapter 3. We have been redeemed to be what? To be fruitful. 
And we are not expected to command anything less. And I pray that in any area you may be believing God for fruitfulness. It could be in the area of finances. It could be in the area of your academics. I pray that through the help of God, your fruitfulness shall become a life testimonies in your hand in the name of Jesus. Amen. Just three things before we close. Three keys to supernatural fruitfulness. Number one, fruitfulness is a reward for serving God. Please tell the person sitting next to you, serve God. When you serve God, you become fruitful. Number two, engage your faith in the words you have found from scriptures. Engage your faith in the words you have found from scriptures. Praise the Lord. What have you discovered? What you discover from the word of God is what will lead to your recovery. So if you have been tagged a barren person in any area, what have you discovered from the pages of scriptures in order for you to recover? Praise the Lord. And we know that God honors his word more than his name. So it is what we discover that will determine our recovery. Praise the Lord. And lastly, joy and rejoicing must be the order of the day for anyone that is believing God for fruitfulness. Remember the Bible speaking in Isaiah, it says, Sing, O barren. You that have been called, you have been told you can't have children. It says, Sing, burst into song. He says, Enlarge your tent. So be joyful. Be joyful. I tell you what, we have seen people, they come to Shiloh, you know, they say, okay, they went to fathers and mothers of uh, the nation uh, class, and they would have been told that come with what? Items. Baby items. How can somebody who, is, who has been called barren go to the market and be buying baby items? That is what? Faith in exercise. Faith in action. Praise the Lord. And it takes the spirit of joy to what? To exercise a true faith. Praise the Lord. Let's rise on our feet this morning. We have had the word of God. Let's receive grace this morning to be a doer of the word of God. Let's receive grace to serve him. Let's receive grace to always seek the help of the Holy Spirit. Let's receive grace this morning. Say, Father, release your grace upon me this morning. Grace never to neglect or to, to ignore the Holy Ghost. Grace never to despise the leading of the Holy Spirit. The Apostle Paul says, I am what I am by the grace of God. Lord, I need your grace. Lord, I need your help. Lord, in this area, I need your help. Lord Jesus, let your help come for me this month. Let your help come for me this day, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, send me your help. In the area of fruitfulness in my finances, Lord, send me your help. In the mighty name of Jesus, I receive grace, O Lord. I receive grace this morning to be a doer of your word. I receive grace to maintain joy and the spirit of rejoicing. I receive grace to maintain joy. After the order of Isaiah chapter 54 from verse 1 to 5, I receive grace this morning. I receive grace to burst into songs of Psalms, O Lord, even in my situation, Lord. Holy Spirit, Lord, I receive grace to serve you. I receive grace to serve you because I know fruitfulness is a reward of serving you. Lord, I receive grace, O Lord, to discover from the pages of your word the scripture, the word concerning my situation, the word that addresses my situation. And as I discover them, Lord, help my faith. Help my humble belief, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Hallelujah. If you have been blessed, give God a clap offering this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are so many things to say to us, but the time will not permit us. And but like we always say, the, 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 the word of God is not in the multitude of words. Praise the Lord. The ones we have had today is enough. Next Sunday is another opportunity to hear more. Praise the Lord. So please, let's endeavor to be here next Sunday. It promises to be powerful, and I know that you will return home blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's be seated in a moment. At this time, there are some important people amongst us, and we would like to welcome you this morning. You are worshiping with us for the first time. 
on a Sunday like this, please kindly signify by raising up your hand. Hallelujah, church, let's clap our hands for them. You are worshiping with us for the first time. Our brother, please, can you rise on your feet? Hallelujah. Please, can you stand up on your feet? Hallelujah, you are welcome, you are welcome. Please, let's show them some love. You are welcome, you are welcome, you are welcome. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd like to welcome you, uh, my brothers and uh, my sister. Uh, this is Winners Chapel International, Brisbane. Uh, this is a home of love. It's a home of signs and wonders as well. As you could hear also from the testimonies that were read, God is doing amazing things in our midst here. Hallelujah. Do we have a witness in the house? If you are a witness, wave your hands to Christ. Hallelujah. So God is doing amazing things in our midst here. So I would like to urge you, to be planted in the house of God. I'd like to hold you to, you know, make this place your home. And I know, just like you heard from that testimony, you can't be here three months and practicing the teachings from this altar and not have a change of story. And your home will not be exempted in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you today. Father, we thank you for your, for your children. We thank you for our brothers and the sister and the baby. Lord Jesus, we pray, Lord, that from this day forward, you begin to do new things in their lives in the name of Jesus. They have come to identify with you. They have come to worship you. You alone, they have come to meet today. Father, meet them at the very point of their needs in the name of Jesus. Let today be a memorable day for them in their lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you establish your covenant of fruitfulness in their lives in the name of Jesus. Whatever thing is it they do or that they do as a means of living or livelihood, Father, prosper them in the name of Jesus. Establish your miracles in their lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we are free. Let's give them a clap of it once again. You are welcome. You are welcome. Please have your seat. The ushers will give you a pamphlet. Please uh, make out time to go through them. And uh, they will also give you a data card. Fill your information there and we'll be contacting you during the course of the week. We'd like to know more about you. We'd like to pray with you as well. And I pray that uh, the Lord that has brought you here will keep you and preserve you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. At the same time, we never like to close service without giving somebody opportunity to identify with him. Remember, we have said it, the foundation for being led, the foundation for being given access to revelation is by being born again. Perhaps you've been born again before. You missed it as a, at you know, any given time. You missed it probably because you felt God has not been treating you well, or probably because of the things of the world, probably because of social group or peer group, you missed it. You'd like to identify with Christ this morning. I'd like you to wave, up, wave your hands this morning, and I'll pray with you. Hallelujah. Let's give God a clap offering. Everlasting Father, we thank you for today. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Let's rise on our feet as we share the grace of the Lord. Before we do that, let's remember to engage Operation 11th Hour Change of Story is on. And I know that you and I won't miss out of our blessing this time in Jesus' name. As you engage praying in the corners of your room, praying in your closet, your testimony will be evident to your word in the name of Jesus. Let's share the grace in fellowship. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Peace. Praise the Lord. And finally, on the covenant highways of life, congratulations, congratulations.